tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Computer animation. Computer Started with animation. Hi folks, what you see here is quite amazing, it looks amazing I think, but uh, it's quite trivial to make. And th this is the beauty of the so-called N-world in Maya. It is uh, the nucleus which well, provides us with the le uh, letter N, and the nucleus is a dynamic structure in Maya. The nucleus, for example, provides gravity, and some of these things in the scene are due to gravity. I show you a few details about this scene and how to set it up. This is the perspective view. You have the particles here and the hair here. When you go to FX, you see the hair right here. Create hair. You cannot create hair just in the open air, so to say. You need uh, some kind of geom geometry to plant it onto. And in my case, that's an, a plane, a polygon plane, which you see when you look at the whole scene from the bottom. And uh, once you planted that N hair onto that polygon plane, you see it depends a little bit on the resolution here. You have the so-called follicles. They are the red objects here. That's where the hair strands come from. The tuft basically is more or less dense and uh, you can control all these things in the settings of the hair system right here. Also the color of course. This is the hair system shape. This is where the hair system sits. It sits just in the center of the scene. So with a hair system shape you can change how dense it is. For example the hairs per clump. If you reduce this from 30 you get a very very few hair compared to, well, 41. The hair reacts to gravity and the gravity is being provided by the nucleus. The default is 9.8 and I reduced this to 2 because I didn't want things to fall down too quickly. This is the way it goes now. You see the hair basically stays where it is. So the tuft is quite intact and we're already at frame 20. That's one second after the start of the animation. And uh, if I increase the gravity to, say, 9 as it was before, you see that the hair already starts swinging and collapsing. And the gravitation of 2 only applies to the hair object because in the particle system, I opened the dynamic properties section and I said ignore the solver gravity. I didn't want the solver gravity to be there. But I wrote a little expression for the local wind. You just can ignore this. It's just a very subtle effect, if it is an effect at all. This is the emitter. It emits the particles. It has keyframes. And it has only two keyframes, as you can see down here, at 1 and sort of 370. And all it does is it moves the emitter through that tuft to the other side. That's all it does. And while it moves there, of course, it emits particles. And I changed two things here in the emitter. One is the rate, the particles per second. The default is 100. And I reduced it to 10. I don't want that mu many particles really. And the other thing I changed is the speed. I increased the speed from 1 to 4. N not crucial here, but uh, it's just how you play with these scenes and dynamics are not predictable. So you have to actually run the simulation, then rerun it and change a parameter, whatever. When you select the, the end particle system here, you see that under shading, I activated spheres. The default settings are points. Let us see what the points look like. See these little dots? And I wanted to make them bigger and react more dramatically with the tuft. Under the shading you find the, how they look. And down here is that bluish tint here. It's a basically a ramp from white to blue. 
that's the color I gave to my particles. And up here is the particle size. The radius is currently set to 0 0.3. If I reduce this to 0 0.1, I have smaller particles. So let's go to 0 0.5, so they're quite big. And they are not allowed to penetrate each other. Why is that? Well, it has to do with collisions. I said self-collide. The default is this. They do collide with, for example, the, the ground plane, uh, and they self-collide. How do they collide with a ground plane? Well, you need to select the end particle system and the ground plane and go to f try to find a passive collider and it's actually under n cloth create a passive collider uh, it's not here and it's not here and it's not under n particles the passive collider but it just since it's all in the n system you just pick it somewhere here and i think in future versions of maya this will be organized a little bit more well uh, better why when we don't have n cloth should we create a passive collider in the end cloth menu but here, here it, it certainly works and um, also the hair collides with the floor and doesn't penetrate the floor anything else yeah the background is a sky dome light and the sky dome light is the only light in the scene in the render settings I enabled motion blur and in the system settings I enabled the GPU. The GPU is the graphics card and it renders much faster than the CPU. But the graphics card needs some time to run up until it's producing the first image, but then the sequence is being produced very fast. This is frame 186 in my animation with motion blur rendered with the GPU. The motion blur is a dramatic effect especially when things are moving so fast this is the same frame without motion blur it looks quite nice in a still image but um, of course for a movie it's not really good and now compare this this is the GPU rendering with the CPU rendering no motion blur the images are basically the same and this one took about 10 times more to render instead of 3 seconds, 30 seconds. And of course, the animation needs music. And with this, I wish you a very, very good day. And don't forget, there are over 400 tutorials now in my channel. Why not have a look at this one?